Welcome one and all. It's Love Them Knives channel. And we, what do we got? We got the Astro from CH Knives. CH Knives, God, I have been doing reviews on CH Knives since, you know, mid-2016. Uh, some of them, you know, early, most interesting knives. Um, it had that skull on the handle, the 3504, I think. Um, and so I've just kind of been a fan ever since then. And uh, the owner used to work at Kaiser. So that must have been back 2014, 2015, before I ever started my channel, right? Um and so this is his newest creation. It's on Kickstarter until the 14th of May. So I'm late doing this, but this just came in from them so I could put it on camera and show you. So here it is. It's called the Astro. It's kind of, it's, it's, yeah, it's futuristic design inspired by the cosmos. Do you watch Dune or sci-fi movies? Here you go. That's... This is the knife, this is what inspired it, apparently. So, and it's, like I said, on Kickstarter. Kickstarter, hold on, hold on. Kickstarter, and I'm a backer. I got a blue one because, well, I got a silver one. He ain't getting that back, damn it. So, I got a blue one, and um, so I'll give you the link to where you can get the information here, but... I'm going to try and get this out to you before the 14th, because if you sign up by the 14th on his Kickstarter thing, then it's, I think it's an uh, equivalent of like $145. I mean, you pledge like, I don't know, a thousand Hong Kong dollars or something. I can't remember what it was. What did it just say? 1089 which is basically $135, $145. So I thought, okay, that's that's good. It's M390, it's titanium, all this kind of thing. And so then he goes through, and you can I'll give you the link, and you can look this over of the different things he's, he's talking about here. But there's the blue one. So I thought, that's cool. Okay, now, before I get back to that, and oh, one more page might be of interest to you, damn it. Let me get that to you right here. Okay, so this will give you, uh, says almost 8.6 inches overall and blade length 3.7. We'll check all that out. We'll do a disassembly, all that. Should be ceramic bearings, yeah. And um, of course, Rockwell 60 to 62, who knows? I hope so. M390 needs to be at least a 60 or better. And uh, a lot of knife manufacturers have a hard time hitting that number, hit, even hitting the minimum. 3.38 uh, ounces. So it's light. It is light. It comes in a box like this. You'll get it in a box like this. Okay. It's fitted, you know what I'm saying, but you get it in the plastic sleeve, etc. And it's, it's so much similar to. The Sultan, this was the last one he was doing on uh, Kickstarter, The Sultan. And it kind of has this kind of Mokutai uh, effect of the Anno that shows through here, okay? And this was S35. I liked it so much. Yeah, I got the one in purple too. Yeah, I like it. Um, I've kept these. Uh, I haven't kept every CH knife I've ever bought, but I've kept these. And, uh, you know, ambidextrous thumb studs. I like his design work. Here's another one that I've that I've kept. And now I can't even remember the name of the damn thing, but it's called the Spear. Okay, not Britney Spears. The Spear. So... And this is S35. So this one's M390. It's not the first time he's done M390. And over the years, I've checked his, you know, steel with a PMI. And also on our spreadsheet should show some uh, Rockwell numbers on some of that too. But I've checked his M390, S35, D2, et cetera, et cetera. And it's always been as stated. So, um, this should be the real deal, Holyfield. And this is interesting here. 
So kind of an integral subframe piece. It, it, it kind of seems very similar to one of the Wii knives, maybe even an Isham one, like the Arrakis would it be? Or it's one of them, I'll take a look and see if I can jam the name in under here. Um, because, and then also this has got dual pocket clips. And that seems very similar to a two sun knife that was done, I think Wong, Wong Dinjin, or however you pronounce his name, the designer uh, did one that had dual pocket clips on it. I think it was set up a little different than this, but that way, I mean, you don't have to have a separate pocket clip made for this side where you can flip it back and forth. It has them, and I tried this in my pocket because I thought that can't really work well, but it actually does. I mean, I had my jeans on, so I don't know what it would be like in some other kind of pants, but it, it, it went right in. And uh, so it was easy to drop it into my pocket and uh, pull it out without problem. Um, here's your lockup. That's 35%, maybe close to 40, right? But yeah, oh, it's light. It feels light. And, and what, is it really, uh, is it really 8.6 inches overall length and 3.7 inch blade? Well, this is 3.43 ounces, so that's that's pretty light. 97 grams, okay. I mean, not too shabby. Um, let me back this up just a little bit because I'm having a hard time keeping it completely in the camera. Okay, you think that'll work better? Okay. Uh, 3.7, 3.7 inches. Well, there's 3.75 right there. Kind of that Persian influence on the, on the blade shape and 95, 96, 95 millimeter. Now, I mean, you can extend that here or decrease it a little bit, but no, 3.75 at that's 8.6 all day long, I would say, at uh, 22 centimeters. Now, let, let me grab this. See how wide this is. 0.43, so it's pretty thin at 10.9 millimeters. Three millimeter thick blade stock, 0.12, okay. So it's light, it's slender, um, it's full size and, oh, by the way, I don't know, can I come up with a piece of paper here? Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one's sharp. That's for sure. And you know, you get that Kickstarter, you sign up and then it gets funded. Okay. If it gets funded, if it gets enough funding to fund the project, which I'm sure it will, then they make them. Okay, so they charge your card, which they're gonna charge my card on the 14th, I imagine, or whatever, the 15th. And then then they go produce them and then they ship them to you. So uh, I would expect, I mean, just like the Kunwu X Tau and stuff like that was, and the other Kickstarter stuff I've uh, participated in, a few months, you know, I think the Solaris, wasn't that on Kickstarter too? Blade Banner, so. But here it is. This is interesting, isn't it? Let me see if they got any information in here. No. Um, no Blade Player Lock Rock. And how does that blade just hits it dead center, doesn't it? Pretty much dead center. Right in there, got a little bit of a blue uh, titanium pivot surround. Otherwise, these are black and uh, hardware, I wonder. Well, hardware's, uh, oh, there's no magnetism here. But yeah, okay, the hardware steel. And so is the pivot hardware. 
But I bet that pivot surround is not. And that's nah, that's not that's not magnetic. Okay. But uh, here's your here's your drop. Um, get your thumb backed up right there. It's over the detent ball pretty quick. And then the drop is pretty nice. All right. Uh, detent is appropriate. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to fail it there and... Nope. Okay. It's where it needs to be right there. And the other thing is you can't finger flick it. There's no thumb studs. There's no front flipper. There's nothing here. It's the flipper tab and it's jimped and it's not too big. It's canted backwards. It's comfortable. It's pretty intuitive. Yeah, it's not a hard pull but it's not real light either. It's right medium and it's where it needs to be. So I'm good with that. Um, ergos, check this out. Well, I mean, there's nothing crazy about it, except you, your hand is gonna wrap around this area. And it that's not really the handle of the knife, is it? I mean, these are the pocket clips. And so, uh, but it, you, it kind of simulates that anyhow. I mean, the feel of it, um, that's okay. I guess I'm not doing a lot of gripping back there. It's mostly up through here anyhow. Mostly middle finger, forefinger, and thumb. So, nah. No, it's really not bothersome, and it kind of, that clip kind of hits me right in here and under here. So, okay, it's kind of in the crease anyhow. So, no, that doesn't feel bad. Let me see reverse grip. Reverse grip is a little bit more awkward here um, because this is a different setup, isn't it, with this lanyard coming through here? Peace. And so when you're putting your thumb here, you're on just this piece here. Um, and touching that, I guess. It's okay. I mean, it's not the best, but it's, it's okay. I think you're going to sacrifice a little bit for the design. But not so much here, really. Not so much here. And... I mean, this is going to be one of those knives where you're either going to like it or you're not, don't you think? It's just one of those. Um, it's lightweight. It's full size. If you're a three-inch blade guy, it's not for you. If you like 3.7 or longer blades, you, this might be yours. And if you're a sucker for Persian, I mean, talk about, I mean, this is way, way out there, right? This, not so much. Okay, but this sucker's like nine inches, right? This one's not quite, but they, they're, they're full-size knives. He's not shy about that. That's for sure. And, yeah, I, I, I like it. I, you know, he does some uh, interesting stuff. Uh, no wonder he left Kaiser. I guess he wanted to blaze out on his own and do his own thing, so... Uh, yeah. So what do you think, boys? Shall we took it apart? And, you know, we got opening here, opening here. So which way should we go? Let's try the backside first. And uh, give it a nice... And are we going to turn the whole thing? Maybe, yeah. Can we break it loose regardless? Or are we going to have to get... Get a number eight on the front side. I think we're going to have to put number eight on the front. Let's get my crazy boy out here. What is this? Okay, yeah. This has got some surface corrosion on it a little bit. i gotta, I got to clean that up. I say that every time I get this damn thing out. Okay. 
Uh, so what are we doing? Well, there's the presentation side. I guess we'll know more when we get it apart. I mean, if it doesn't have a D-shaped pivot, you know, to where it, it, it stays in place, that's okay as long as you've got two ways to put a torx in front and back. You know what I'm saying? So you can stabilize it and break it away. Okay, so, I mean, that's okay. Um, and, oh, where was my other? Oh, I know. I had my little portable Weeha here that I had set up. Ooh, okay. Yeah. That was ready to go. Okay. And so is that. So, yeah, I got two of these. I thought I lost this one. And, you know, all the bits fit in the handle, you know, that kind of thing. And I know Weeha's not the favored brand anymore. Uh, it's Weera. And I've got Weera bits and Weeha bits, but I'm going to use whatever bit works at the time. But, yeah, this is a little, you know, so this is not a quarter inch, you know. But it's nice because you can just put all the bits in there. Number four to number eight, I think, are the sizes. And then just, you know, I got it from KC Tools in Kansas City. And let's, uh, let's hope all these screws are the same size. And you know what? Nope. These two are. Okay. So these front two same size let's see if the back two are different and you know what this back one is going to be different because it's flat and these others are like a button button head button top thing okay so ashley will be able to identify it easier that way won't we because the one with the machined flat surface is pocket clip the other one that's long is this button head or whatever, cap head or whatever, and it goes next. So, okay, okay. So now, yikes, let's see what pulls through here. That's the pocket clip from the back. Okay, and here's the pocket clip from the front. All right. Wow, lightweight. And let's open it up. And let's see if it will come apart for me like that. Okay. And uh, that's probably a steel washer. Okay, yeah, it is. Fairly thin steel washer, actually. And then this is all titanium. Okay. With the, with that that that's fairly thin, not paper thin, but it's fairly thin. Okay, ceramic bearings, you know, front and back. Okay, um, and then of course another steel washer on that side. Let me push this through and see what we got. Okay, so this is a one piece coming from the back. So, really, the front it was what was going to unscrew to begin with. Okay. Okay. And then hardened steel insert with ceramic detent ball. Here's your backspacer, which is, I guess I'd have to unscrew it to pull it away from the frame. But I think you get the idea right there. Okay. Let me see if there's any other interesting stuff on here no like numbers or anything on the inside and i'm imagining this is a pre-production unit but not a prototype so okay that's good so if i guess we're going to put it back together we going to do it from the back side Throw some bearings on here and uh, hit it with the juice. And uh, let's kick this around. 
And I guess, see, I didn't have to worry about a blade stop because it's built into the blade here, and so it runs on this track here. So we're good. We're good. Compress the lock bar so I can jack me another set of bearings over here. And what are we doing? What are we doing? It's not that difficult. Okay, so I guess I can go ahead and put this in and then start popping the, the pocket clip back on and then body screws. Hold on. Okay, let's not get too medieval on this. That's enough. Okay, now... Remember the cap. Okay, so the cap, whoop, 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 whoop. the long one, there was the cap, goes right there. These are number sixes, though, these body screws. That would have been maybe something I would have thought about going to number eights. Um, and then these two little thin minis, they're the same, and so they go up here until you knock them out. Try to escape, will you? Not likely. Okay. And now we got pocket clip. And this one came from the back side, as I recall. And so you got a little machined area around here and it fits into this machined area there. Okay. So kick it in. So that'll that'll you know stabilize it regardless, even though there's only one screw holding it. And then this side, uh, there you go. Just like it was meant to fit there. And okay, I mean we're jacked down. Let's see if we're. If we're centered, it looks like it. Let's see if we got blade play. Nope, no blade play. Did I jack down on it too hard? Nope, nope. Ah, hit the bottom on the... There you go. Okay, yeah, we're good. Nice. Astro. I'd rather have this Astro than the Chevy Astro van. Oh, remember that one? What a winner that was. Whew. Those days are gone, my friend. Or could it be Astro, like Jetsons, right? Right? My boy Elroy. And uh, <laughs> uh, that, those were the good old days. Those were good cartoons. Okay. CH Knives, Astro, Futuristic. Here you go. What a beautiful design. You want one? Get it on Kickstarter. Of course, I'm sure once they go into production, if you didn't make that cutoff, don't worry. They'll be on uh, line, you know, after they get produced and stuff. I'm sure they will make more and they will be available for sale. It just may not get the Kickstarter price. You see what I'm saying? So, okay. But. Yeah, I'm going to have one of these. And now, you know, that's the thing. Now I'm going to have a silver and a blue. Just like I've got a silver and a purple of the Sultan. Uh, yeah, I've gone a little CH crazy. I used to have a bunch more. And I do have more. I've, I've got a bunch of G10 ones too. Where's the spear? Come here. So what do you think? There's a group right there. That's a crazy group of knives there. But uh, check out the Astro. These have already come out. So you can get these online, you know, the, the Sultan and the Spear. Uh, I think it's Knives Spot. I think that's still the main, uh, main place for the CH Knives. But I'll put the links down below. Other than the Kickstarter, where you could just buy retail, buy CH Knives. I'll leave you to it. Thank you so much for hanging out, boys. We are. Love them knives, wherever it says that. Does it say that around here? Right.
right there. So you guys, stay sharp.